We want to recap for you the explosive story we reported earlier in the program, dominating headlines this week. Three days ago, a video clip was posted on the blog of a conservative activist. It shows Shirley Sherrod, a USDA official, talking about her reluctance to help a white farmer some 24 years ago. That video quickly went viral. Sherrod was forced to resign. And then the entire video surfaced, and that's when it became clear her original statement completely taken out of context. Agricultural Secretary Tim Vilsack has since apologized and offered her another job. We had an opportunity to discuss uh, a unique opportunity here at USDA that might be of interest to her. Shirley Sherrod joins us live here in the studio this morning. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Good to be here. I'm sure it's been an exhausting few days for you. Yes, it has. Uh, it, there's so much talk about how quick everyone was to react to this. The administration, the NAACP. You said you weren't even given a chance to explain. You basically right. were told to pull over on the side of the road, resign on your BlackBerry. Yes. What does that tell you about the state of things in this country, that everybody is so quick to say, you were wrong, you're out? Yes, that, you know, it tells me that... We've gotten to a point where we can't, we're not interested. Well, I guess I shouldn't say interested in the truth, but we're not willing to take the time to, to look at all the facts before jumping out there to make decisions. Decisions that were so wrong in, in, in this, um, in, especially in this case. And when you look at your case specifically, you were taken, things that you said were taken, put on a website, edited, because someone had a bone to pick, not with you, right. but with someone else, but with something greater. How does that make you feel as a person? You know, it does not feel good that someone was just willing to, you know, as much as, and I can't even think of his name, Bright. What Andrew Breitbart. Andrew, yeah. As much as he's saying it was about the NAACP, he had to know that it was about me. He was willing to, to destroy me to get to what he thought, to, to, the, to try to destroy the NAACP. I don't see how he could connect the two, because the NAACP didn't make those statements. I made the statements. Mm -hmm. I told the story. I was using my life to really help people see how I changed. And in doing that, and I have, every, you know, if you hear my story, you know I have every reason to think differently. But in telling my story, how I moved to a place where I can work with anyone, mm -hmm. it helps others to see that they can do the same. And it seems to be the ultimate irony, too, that your story, which was about understanding it's not about black and white or different races, but it's, it's a struggle for the haves and the have-nots, the ultimate irony that that story was used, in fact, to hopefully portray the exact opposite. Right. That's why he had to know what he was doing. I think he, I'm certain he didn't think the other side of the story would come out, but he knew he was misrepresenting the fact. Has he apologized to you? No, he hasn't. Do you expect an apology? No, I don't. It would... That's the, from what I, you know, I don't know him, never heard of him mm -hmm. before this, this happened, but from what I think he is, I don't think I would ever receive an apology. Would you consider legal action against him? Yes. And is, is that something you're actively talking about? Or? I haven't talked about it actively, but I would definitely consider it. You've also been offered a job, a, a new job, not your old position, mm -hmm. um, back with the Agriculture Department. I know you still need a little time to, to look at the offer, but essentially be dealing with civil rights issues. Right. Is that something that you'd like to be involved in? You know, that's something I've been involved in since 1965. So it's not something new to me. Maybe it's something new to the department, but it's definitely not something new to me. Um, I would not like to be the one person that this country is looking at to solve all of the problems of discrimination within the Department of Agriculture. They have been going on for years in terms of black farmers and now Hispanic farmers, Native American farmers, women farmers. There are many, many, many layers of issues there. And I don't know that the department is ready to deal with them which is sort of a sad statement to say that they may not be ready to deal with them. Do you think the government um, and then even perhaps the American people are ready to deal with issues like this, the quick reaction, the knee-jerk reaction, because someone is so afraid of any perceived bias or any perceived racism? You know, I would hope that by, you know, having gone through this these last few days, it would help this country to really, people in this country, to really look at what we're doing, you know, let's step back 
and see if we can have a new start. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if my suffering over these last few days can help move that forward, hey, I'm willing to be the fall guy for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a fall, but uh, you're rising up from it, and we do appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning. Shirley Sherrod, thanks. Thank you.